Hello, Angry Spork here, doing a vlog for DC Fandom. They kicked it off with an introduction uh, with the host, one of the hosts, Aisha Tyler. They got into the Wonder Woman movie coming up, 1984. Uh, I kind of tuned in and out of that one because, uh, you know, I heard some fan questions and everything, and Linda Carter made an appearance, and more or less, I would just, I didn't pay that much attention because I didn't want to get spoiled for the movie. Then, after one of those uh, claymation shorts, I think, out of Britain, uh, they delved into the upcoming game, Gotham Knights. And the trailer uh, sees, you know, there's, like, news reports that there was an explosion, and billionaire philanthropist Bruce Wayne has been confirmed to be... And just kind of cuts out there, and then there's this video of... Uh, a pre-recorded video of Bruce saying, if you're watching this, I'm dead. I'm leaving Gotham to you. There's, you know, you know, go here for some tech that's a little outdated, but um, and avoid the police because ever since Jim died, they haven't really been our biggest fans. So that is one of the things. Because when they say billionaire Bruce Wayne died in an explosion, you could say, well, maybe, maybe it's tied into the Arkham stuff. But Jim dying, yeah, l less so. Um, fucking hair's going nuts. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a different universe, just from that alone. The people getting this message are Robin, who might very well be Tim Drake, I'm guessing it's Tim Drake, Red Hood, Batgirl, Barbara Gordon. Uh, there was a time where her hair looked bl jet black, so I'm wondering, did they put Cassandra in her Burnside suit? Because it's very much inspired by her Burnside suit. But, uh, it's, it's Babs, and, and of course, Nightwing. Um, and I guess you play as these characters throughout the game. They showed some gameplay footage. It looks good. Um, can't say exactly how it plays in relation to the Arkham games, but some of the move sets seem to be very similar. You know, there are silent takedowns and so forth. It, it's a world where there doesn't seem to be a Batman, and I guess no one knows Bruce Wayne was Batman, but Bruce Wayne's gone. And, of course, the Court of Owls are involved. And it got me thinking... And I, and I mentioned this on the DC forums not too long ago. I had an idea for a game in the same vein as, you know, the Arkham games, where you trade out different characters to play, and Batman's missing, and you gotta go look for him. One of the big differences is that instead of Babs as Batgirl, I would have had Stephanie Brown as Batgirl, and instead of Red Hood, it would have been Black Bat, Cassandra Kane, because I thought of this years ago. So, this is what they did. Whatever. And it's not like I was spreading it around, so I don't think they stole the idea from me. I noticed they gave Babs these kind of electrified tonfa, which kind of makes sense because, you know, her dad was a cop, and a tonfa is very much like a nightstick some police officers carry. A lot of the stuff people were saying seems to be true. It looks like it could be a very good game. I have an idea of how the game could go, and I... I it's kind of a spoiler, but it's really more speculation on my part. So just jump ahead to this time frame if you don't want to hear my thoughts. I'm willing to bet that the Court of Owls is going to resurrect Bruce Wayne and you're going to have to fight him. I mean, he if he is dead, because we know that we've had this fake out before. So if he's dead, I would not be surprised if as like maybe the final boss fight or next to final boss fight... You have to fight Bruce. Zombie Bruce or something. Um, and it's entirely possible they did actually kill Bruce off here. Because, you know, they killed quite a few characters in the Arkham games. Uh, but so far it's looking like a game to buy, you know, if you got the money for it. Then you got a panel on Sandman, hosted by Yvette Nicole Brown, whom you might remember from Community or the Odd Couple reboot on CBS from a couple of years back. I've never followed or read Sandman. Just trying to avoid any attacks from the internet, that's all. But um, I did listen to some of it, and I guess there's a new series written by G. Willow uh, Wilson. You can tell how closely I paid attention. One thing that caught my attention was her mentioning to keep in mind the emotional investment readers have had in the series and in the characters. Interesting concept, isn't it? 
So after that, there was a Multiversity 101 panel. It was Jim Lee and Greg Berlanti and one or two other people. I can't remember. I was, you know, working pretty heavily before I started doing these vlogs. So I'm kind of exhausted. <laughs> Sealing someone's driveway is so much fun. Anyway, the, uh, you know, it was just like a lot of talking about the interconnectivity between the DC TV shows, a lot of gushing on Jim Lee. Then they had a short where Terry McGinnis, and they got Will Friedel and Kevin Conroy, Terry McGinnis and Bruce Wayne of Batman Beyond, were basically riffing on an episode of the Batman 66 TV series. It wasn't exactly Mystery Science Theater 3000, but it was still kind of funny. <laughs> For the um, Beyond Batman thing, there was a uh, talk about the next Flash movie with uh, Ezra Miller, who's like about 50-60% caveman by the looks of it. He's missing the, the brow, but he's got the hair and the face. He's got, guy who looks like he could use a haircut is all I'm saying. <laughs> no offense. I had a lot of talk with the director and um, what they're doing with the film, they showed some sketches of what Flash's costume is going to look like, and it's more—it's not like this plated armor type of thing that he had in Justice League. Uh, it's much more streamlined, and uh, it's got these seams around the arms and, and the shoulders and so forth, it looking a lot like the Green Lantern suit from the Ryan Reynolds movie. And it's supposedly, like, constructed by Batman. Don't know if maybe Bruce, you know, fell asleep watching that film and said, Hey, this is going to be Barry's new suit. I've also had a bit too much bad cognac. No, Alfred, you're drunk. I mean, the sketches were a little on the dark side, a little heavily shaded, so I... Can't say for certain how it would look in the film when, it, when it's actually fleshed out. It just looks a little weird. I just... It feels like the Flash's costume is, like, very basic and it doesn't really need that much alteration. But maybe it'll look better once it's actually in physical suit form. Um, but, you know, they're talking about, like, multiple universes with the Flash film. There's already been talk about how, you know, they'll have Batman played by Ben Affleck in the movie, and you're going to get Michael Keaton to appear as, I guess, the 89 Batman. Just so many problems resulted because of Flashpoint. It's hard for me to get excited about a Flash movie involving the Flashpoint storyline. It's like... He, Barry Allen wasn't even originally a dude who lost his mom and fought crime and was inspired by it and all this because of it. His parents were alive, they weren't framed for murder, and they weren't murdered. He was just a good guy who got powers and decided to do the right thing with them. At least that's how I understand it. But they're going with the Jeff Johns re retcon that, well, his mama died, and now he's gotta be angsty. Uh, like, I might see it, because the DC movies have been getting better, but the Flashpoint thing just doesn't really excite me. Um, unless they, uh, the, the result of the Flashpoint movie is that uh, Ella J. Bosco gets to play a more uh, faithful version of Cassandra Cain in a, in a movie afterwards, where the whole Birds of Prey thing didn't involve her, and n none of the orphan stuff, because the orphan stuff is bad, then I'd be okay with it. Then there was a panel on the movie The Suicide Squad with James Gunn. Um, I kind of like walked away from my computer after that because I just didn't. I thought it was, at first it was just like generally about The Suicide Squad, not the movie. But, uh, you know, either way, I wasn't really interested. And maybe I'll see it because James Gunn did good work with the Guardians of the Galaxy and I didn't care about any of those characters. And then there was a panel about, you know, women of color in the DC universe, and a lot of it was, like, actresses who played women of color in the DC TV shows, like, like the woman who plays Iris West Allen on The Flash, and uh, someone on 
Legends of Tomorrow, but I don't watch that show, so... Mostly I caught the tail end of it, like, what would you do if you had your character superpowers in real life? And, well, I, what they said didn't bother me. I found it rather understandable, but I am betting that there are going to be some people who are going to be all up in arms about it for whatever reason. Then there was a panel called Legacy of the Bat, which purported to be about uh, Batman's allies, when really, again, it was just mostly focused on, like, the TV and the movies, they talk, they talk to the guy who plays Nightwing on Titans, they talk to uh, the showrunner on Batwoman, and the next Batwoman, since Ruby Rose is leaving, or has left, rather. Uh, they, they basically talked about Nightwing, Robin, uh, and, and Batwoman. That's about it. So, I was thinking, oh, were they, they going to talk about, like, Batgirl, and, like, you know these other characters that have been backing Batman up for so long, but they didn't, which I think is fine, because then they probably would have mentioned Orphan, and then I would have reached! Anyway... Then it was a song by Chris Daughtry that, you know, had Superman in the title, so why not? And then Joker put on a happy face, which was basically like a compilation of DVD extras from various movies involving the Joker and it was narrated in part by Kevin Conroy, and you can tell who the, the you can tell because many of the shots were like Mark Hamill and Jack Nicholson years ago. It, some insight if you haven't already watched that stuff. And there was something about Jim Lee. He was critiquing one particular artist's work. But surprise panel they had was a history of milestone comics. They talked about the late Dwayne McDuffie. They talked with Phil Lamar about you know because he voiced Static. Milestone is relaunching in 2021, so fans of Static, Icon, and Rocket, there you go. Uh, I I don't think I ever bought a Milestone comic, but I was always more like DC and Marvel, and that was about it. Occasionally, maybe another publisher would pop into my collection at some point, but it was really more like incidental. And there's this panel on, you know, Voices of the Batman, but honestly, I'm kind of tapped out of the whole... Fandom experience. Uh, there are a bunch of other panels that I just don't care about, like the Snyder Cut, Ask Harley Quinn, Shazam. Uh, not that interested in the Batman panel when it comes up. I'll probably catch an encore, or actually, no, I'll probably just skip it because I don't want to really get spoiled about anything there. So after the the Batman panel, the uh, whole thing just restarts from the beginning. So, yeah, that's my vlog. I'm very tired, and uh, you all take care. Good night.